Are you ready, kids? Oh boy, ha ha ha. You clicked on a very good old video. Are you ready to just fucking dislike, dislike, dislike? Cause you are not gonna like any of this shit. Let's get into it. The world is great. Let's see what uh, people have to say about things in the world and how people treat each other. Oh man, get fucking ready, man. This is not gonna be good. Women who choose violent slash aggressive men as partners don't deserve sympathy when they face the consequences of their poor choices. This is on r slash true unpopular opinion, not the fake one the true one. We see this kind of thing happening all the time. Women choosing men who engage in toxic behavior such as violence towards others because he makes her wet and yet are for some reason surprised when that violence is redirected towards them. They were all too willing to ignore this violence when it was displayed towards others and not themselves. Feminists encourage these women to cry and scream about how much of a victim they are on social media without doing any self-reflection on their decisions. There was no excuse to complain about being cheated on or treated badly if those behaviors were apparent to a woman from the start. And these people should be encouraged to take accountability instead of blaming the world or misogyny for their inability to make wise choices. Hmm. Firstly, before we get into it, are women attracted to aggressive men? According to fucking Google, when I looked it up right now, just then here and are, some studies have found that women may find men with appetitive, appetitive aggression. That doesn't sound good. And more desirable as short-term partners, particularly during their fertile phase. Repetitive aggression is the tendency to act violently even when not threatened. One study found that women in their fertile window of their menstrual cycle preferred men who exhibited higher repetitive aggression as short-term partners. The study also found that men with a combination of high repetitive aggression and no trauma symptoms were the more desirable option. No trauma symptoms. Just aggressive for no reason. Other studies have found that women find male characteristics such as dominance, masculine facial features more attractive when they are fertile. Some say that women are attracted to hard and tough guys, and others say that women love a dominant man who takes control and fights his way through life. Damn. Well, seems Google's taking the side of uh, women like men that are aggressive and mean and dominant. In a way, they're kind. Of, it's kind of reaffirming what this guy says, or at least where he's coming from, saying that like if you like aggressive and dominance and you were receiving that from somebody that you've enabled or you put into a particular place in your life, you are going to receive that and you have no right to complain. Let's see, we're about three minutes in the video. I'll share my opinion on this before we get into other people's opinion. So do, according to just his question by itself, women who choose violent aggressive men as partners don't deserve sympathy when they face the consequences. So if they get abused, I guess, that's what we're talking about. Hmm. Sympathy, no. Pity, yes. The difference between sympathy is Sympathy is more of like a, a compassionate feeling bad for somebody else. Like you can re relate to them. Pity is more of a belittling judgment of them. If you choose to be with somebody and they're aggressive and they abuse you and you enable that, you tolerate it, and then you complain about you being abused and such, you do not deserve sympathy for that. You should learn how to take accountability for your choices, especially if you're an attractive woman who has options, even just an average woman who has options. Like, just go somewhere else. Yes, it's not easy. It's simple. It's sort of like alcohol or being addicted to a substance. It's not easy being able to pull yourself away from this thing that you've just fucking... Oh, yeah, I love that. Oh. But that's the answer. You have no choice. It's either you keep succumbing to it or you rip yourself away and you try to better yourself distant from that thing that you were once addicted to. It's exactly the same thing. In the end, you are culpable. Now, more fault and more blame is always on the perpetrator, always. If you have an abused and you have an abuser, it is always the fault of the abuser. But it, the more that the abused enables their own abuse, that culpability starts to creep onto them. It starts also becoming slightly their fault. Not entirely, it is always the abuser's fault, but the more you enable it, the more fault of yours it is. Alrighty, so that's that. That's the correct opinion. I know, I hate it, right? Accountability? No. I, I like, feel free to just crucify me. I, I don't give a shit, as long as you're giving me views. So let's see what this guy had to say. Nah, no one deserves that type of abuse. It isn't always choice, and hindsight is a bitch. Also, anyone can hide their true nature and stab you in the back later. I know this well. Nah, no one deserves this type of abuse. He didn't, that wasn't what was stated. They said, you don't deserve sympathy if you enable this abuse for yourself. They didn't say you deserve the abuse. They're essentially saying, if you're putting up with it and you're making excuses for it, you don't deserve sympathy. There's a difference between saying somebody deserves to go through something and saying that this thing that somebody has gone through isn't worthy of sympathy because they have enabled that for themselves. Also, anyone can hide their true nature and stab you in the back later. I know this well. Yes, absolutely. But once you're getting stabbed, the, the veil's been unveiled. <laughs> you know now. And if you keep going back to that and you keep making excuses for it, no sympathy. Pity, sure. 
I feel bad for you in more of a demeaning fashion because you don't have like the backbone to do what's right, but no sympathy. Absolutely not. See how the guy responded. I'm talking about when it's obvious and yet the victim willfully chooses to ignore the warning signs. Negative 13, 13 downloads. Um, warning signs, that's too interpretive. Especially when you look, yeah. Because especially if women just by default find aggressive men to be more attractive and desirable, isn't the aggression itself can be a, a form of a, a warning sign, which I mean, I don't even, that's not strong enough of an argument if you ask me. You can't interpret that stuff. You kind of got to run into it. Like it just happens, I guess. It's going to happen inevitably because deserve is too like meaningful. Deserve implies that like these things happen for a reason and there is a reason, but like the reason isn't valid or intelligent or reasonable. Deserve, I don't know, that's too harsh. Is you saying you got what's coming? Is that uh, in a sense saying you deserve something? Yeah, okay. Um, let's just see what else other people have to say because there's a lot of stupid people have, who have dumb, dumb opinions. Let's see what this guy has to say. They don't deserve being abused, but they also don't deserve sympathy. Yeah, that's the right answer, absolutely. You can show support and you'd be like, hey, you know, you're getting abused and I feel, feel I find you to be kind of important. I don't like seeing you get abused, but if you keep enabling it, it's like, all right. If you're getting abused, that hurts the people who find you to be important. And in a sense, you're being neglectful of them. What about the people who find you to be important when you just refuse to take care of yourself to it, when you're just enabling all this stuff for yourself? And yes, enabling. Like, unless we're talking about like a, a, ch a parent abusing their child, which the child can't do anything about that. That is completely different versus somebody who's in a relationship with somebody who's abusive and they just make excuses to the abuse that they put themselves into. Now, there are emotional reasons, right, as to why they tolerate the abuse. Same reason why there's emotional reasons as to why the abuser is abusing. Like, again, the answer's simple, it's not easy. You have to find a way to combat those things. You have to approach those things in your life. And you have to, like, do something about it instead of making excuses and then demanding sympathy from the people or expecting sympathy. Where's the sympathy for the abuser? What about they, what they've been through, right? There's a reason why they're abusing. Where's their sympathy? Even though what they're doing causes immense pain and suffering to other people, the same way uh, a person who's getting abused, enabling their own abuse causes pain and suffering to people who find them being important, what's different there? Because yes, in the end, it is the abuser's fault, more so than any, anyone else in any type of situation. It's always the perpetrator's fault. But like, they have reasons as to why they're doing things, reasons that they haven't really uh, approached in their life. And they're just continuing to double down and they're bullshit. All right, see what people reply to, to this comment. I'll remember this next time we cry about our, men cry about our suicide rates, that they don't deserve sympathy for the things that happen to them. So that, that argument, how does that argument work if like a lot of dudes, which most dudes end up deleting themselves because they just don't believe there's anything, any better choice in life. And despite them trying, they still fail. How's that akin to somebody who enables their own abuse simply as a result of their own volition. You chose to get in a relationship with this person. You chose to follow through with your feelings for this person. How does a dude choose to uh, be treated poorly as a result of his uh, genetic circumstance or being perceived as a male? That's a, uh, of course you're gonna try to reach for straws, I guess, you know, because I guess people just want to demand sympathy for people who um, make shitty decisions. But if you're a dude and you can't re reach that ridiculously uh, unrealistic standard that's always applied to in general, then that's just your fault for not meeting that, that standard. But it isn't the fault of the person who was given these opportunities for relationship and made shitty choices despite not having to put in the effort when it comes to acquiring those things. I like that. I like that reasoning. Yeah, it's a lot of insults. A lot of people who are... Uh... Username checks out. Yeah, post history confirms it. You're not arguing the point. You're just talking about the other stupid shit that this person may have said. Holy shit, dude. What the fuck's your post history? You need to take a break. You're not arguing his point. I feel sorry for you. You're not arguing his point. It is no different than men who get hard when faced with a toxic woman. If this was not a thing, don't stick your dick in crazy would not be a phrase. Yeah, don't stick your dick in crazy. That's applying accountability to dudes who choose poorly. Same exact thing. If a man gets in a, in a relationship with a woman and she's abusive towards him and he tolerates that and puts up with it, he's still somewhat at fault. The woman is more at fault in that scenario, the same way a dude who's abusive to a woman is, is more so at fault in that scenario. But the person who enables it, the people who keep attaching themselves to them and making excuses for that, that is also their, their fault to an extent. Not the same extent as the abuser, but to an extent you were not clear of accountability. The only thing is that when you say a phrase like don't stick your dick in crazy, that applies, in, like intrinsically applies accountability to a dude who makes a bad decision when it comes to this. It's not, the fact that it's not even crazy, 
to say that, like, to, to hold the dude accountable for making these bad decisions, but, it, like, it's incredibly insulting for you to, to hold a woman accountable for making the same exact choice. What does that say about society and our standards? Someone's saying that some, uh, like, so many people are replying in such a toxic, shitty fashion. Everyone's just agreeing with each other. They're not actually making any counterpoints. They're just using emotional judgments to de delegitimize what this guy has to say. Wow. So I guess it's insulting if you apply accountability to a woman, but not a dude. Dudes should be seen as adults. Women should be treated as children. What's the, what's the, what's your, your thesis here? In the vast majority of cases, women aren't going after these guys because their violence makes them wet. It's typically because the guy, one, the guy in question is good or well-practiced enough at hiding or minimizing his red flags until he has a woman in place where he has control over her and has her cut off from others, which again, you have to enable that. <laughs> If like someone's getting tied to you and they're getting tied closer and closer, you have to choose to tie yourself closer and closer to them. This isn't a person who has a child who's immediately tied to that person and who has no sense of autonomy in their life. We're talking about grown adults here. You seem to like disregard that to, I guess, like enable the lack of accountability to the, uh, the people who put themselves in these scenarios. Two, the woman has self-esteem issues and trauma from abuse, bad past relationship, et cetera, that is convinced that she doesn't have, she is deserving better or that he's too good for her or some combination of all this. Okay, so what are you doing to combat that trauma? You seeking therapy? You heeding the opinions of the people who actually do care about you? Are you doing anything to remedy that or are you just going to use that as an excuse to keep like enabling this crap for yourself? Is that, is that the reasoning? It, or, like what's with the lack of accountability here? Predatory people are very good at seeking out marks who are most likely to fall for whatever they're selling as well. Yeah, that's unfortunately how the world works. And if it's working for all these dudes, then what does that say about what they're doing? That it's effective in, in terms of controlling people and getting what they want? What about all the other dudes who don't do those types of things and who get kicked to the curb? because they don't uh, demonstrate masculine, aggressive tendencies. What about them? Oh, right, no, that's their fault, right? The accountability on them, but not for these, these guys over here. Because that makes sense, right? Even though there's all sorts of dudes who are out there who are actually looking for a relationship. Not myself, I'm just arguing on their behalf. I think it's all fucking mindless nonsense. But there's people out there who are actually like decent, who would treat these women well. But because the women aren't able to approach their past traumas and they have shit taste and they may, and everyone around them makes excuses for their shit taste, that's not her fault. But it's the dude's fault for not being able to swoon. Do you see how these things can kind of come one, and one together? It's the dude's fault for not manifesting these right traits to be able to uh, acquire a, a potential partner. And he gets punished for not manifesting these aggressive masculine tendencies. Yet the people that a lot of women go after when they prioritize these things, when it comes to what they find to be attractive, are these abusive, mindless monsters. Like, it's, it's a recurring cycle that plays into itself and exacerbates itself. That's somehow the fault of the dude for not doing enough to be able to get a woman, but it's not the fault of the woman for choosing to get with dudes who exhibit these, mask these uh, bad ten traits, these toxic uh, attributes. I love that. I love how backwards everyone is. But remember, these are humans. They're, they're dumb. Humans are mindless animals, so you can't really expect anything with them. All of the men that have written this, this post almost word for word on the sub, always ignore that people can be deceiving. Yep. Like most abusive men aren't going to lead with abuse. They will be nice and charming. I mean, what about the people who are actually like legitimately nice and charming just because they're nice and charming as part of their character and they don't get this type of optionality as these other dudes. They're clearly doing more than just being nice and charming. They're curating people's emotions. At least in this particular instance, we're talking about men and women. Men are curating these women's emotions. They're doing stuff that elicits intensity and women follow that. What do, you, what do you think all the dating advice out there is for dudes, right? Do this, do that, do this in order to meet this standard. For women, it's like, oh, put out subtle signs. Don't do this, don't do that. It's like, you're, as a dude, you're kind of incentivized to be a piece of shit. If all you've ever done is get rejected your entire life for being who you are, for not making a woman feel a certain way towards you, and there's certain ways in which you can manipulate and take advantage, why would you not do those things? If you're rewarded for it, clearly if there's so many women in abusive relationships, like the abuse is working to some extent. I've heard so many countless instances like this. There's one girl, she was really fucking stupid and I don't feel bad for her to even, she was a dumb person and she's a bad person too. But she was like with a guy for like seven years who would like control everything. Like you can't interact with friends. You can't gotta go out here and there when I say you can you know, all these types of things controlling her and she would just sit and complain and shit. It didn't end until like she started having seizures and the guy's just like, whoa, gross. And then he dumped her, which I thought was also pretty funny. But it's like, if she's with a guy and she chose to be with him for that long and she continues to put up with it, then it's like, you have all these dudes that are trying to get with you. They're sliding into your DMs, but you disregard them or you just don't get with them in order to respect this thing that has no respect for you. 
That's funny. I find that very funny. I don't give a shit if your self-esteem is low. Like, figure out a way to do something about it. I don't receive compassion. So many other people don't receive compassion. You get blamed for all sorts of stuff. Accountability serves its purpose. But, like, people want to be selectively accountable with who they do and don't want to uh, give it to because of, like, usually cultural influences. Like, most abusive men aren't going to leave with abuse. They'll be nice charming. My papa didn't start beating my mama until they got back to the car after her ultrasound appointment for her first baby. You want to just ignore all the, the years leading up to that point, to the point when she was pregnant, including the nine months of actual pregnancy before she actually had her child? Yeah, you want to, yeah. And, and that's when it starts to go into scumbag territory. It starts to go in scumbag territory when, when the woman has a child and then brings the child into this. It's like, okay, you can enable your own abuse, you can make an excuse for it, and you can like get sympathy from people and keep making bad decisions that like make that that exacerbate your, your circumstances. The second you create a child and subject him to that, fuck you. You're just as culpable as the as the perpetrator in that instance. Your your spinelessness, your cowardice is is now destroying somebody else. That's when I even remove the pity. That's when I'm just like, yeah, go fuck yourself. At that point, it's like, you can't just, you just can't be attached. These people aren't going to do what's good. So it's just like, fuck it. Who cares? The outcome is going to be the outcome. And there's nothing anyone can do about it. In order for this to, to be like something for something good to come of this, this person needs to take a stand and actually grow a spine and do what's right instead of just enabling this stuff. At that point, you're, you're a piece of shit if you do that. The abuser has always already been a piece of shit. That's been established. <laughs> And they're not, they clearly aren't going to change or do anything better. So you have to react accordingly to that instead of just making excuses for their, their violence. Yeah. If you made it this far in the video, good, good on you, dude. Honestly, <laughs> would have expected people to just like, cause you know, most people are stupid and they don't know how to listen and they, they don't know how to use their brains properly. So they're going to interpret the absolute worst of everything that's being said and not listen to reasoning because people are dumb. Yeah. We'll do one more, one more response. All right. Last one. I've kind of thought about this myself. Like, genuinely, what's so hard about leaving an abusive person? Like, if someone degraded me and hit me and shit, I would be closer to hating them than wanting to be in a relationship with them. I wish women would stop getting with dickhead men, but a lot of them have such deep-rooted insecurity when it comes to men, they can barely help it. Four downvotes. See with someone's reply. People are not leaving their abuses. a very common phenomenon. Not, but, not dif but difficult to understand if you've never been in an abusive relationship. Never starts with hitting and de degradation because people do leave those relationships. Clearly not if they're, if they're, you know, getting abused. If people actually do take a stand, then they, this, this, this shit wouldn't be happening. We wouldn't be having this conversation. I'm a man and have been with abusive women. She didn't start that way, and it was years before there was anything I think was obvious. Of course, they justify their actions because I was in the relationship. I was in the relationship in good faith. I believed her. It took an intervention from family for me to start to understand how bad it got. I imagine a lot of men are capable of being this way to women, too. Absolutely. It goes both ways. And you are culpable. If you don't like think about these things, uh, once you get to that point, I, I understand it is hard to view it, you know, relation like love. It's a mindless emotion that isn't motivated by anything logical. It's just a fucking it's it's heroin. But like when you speak to a heroin user, what is the solution to their their problems? Go to rehab, like get it, get it, like fix the problem before it really goes to shit instead of keep continuously indulging in the drug just because it makes you feel a certain way. Remember, the answer is, is, it's simple, but it's not easy. But that's the answer. You have to do something. Otherwise, you will get fucked. There is no other choice here. With this guy, he deserves pity. Sure. Not sympathy. Like, you should have done something about that sooner. And I get it. Now, I would have a little bit more pity. I've said this in previous videos, but, you know, I've seen those. I have a little bit more pity for dudes because it is not, it's not easy to get out of square one than it is for a woman. A woman could just open her phone, bleep, bloop, bloop, have 20 guys waiting to interact with them with little to no effort handing them their relationship. But a dude has to actively put themselves out there, has to actively improve himself, have to actively increase his value in order to just get a potential chance. The same way that a lot of women have access to optionality, a lot of those options tend to be garbage. It's the same exact thing for dudes. Only thing is, in order for dudes to get this, even just an, a modicum of, this, of the degree of options that a woman has, the effort is, like, a hundredfold. <laughs> he has to put in a hundred times the effort for, like, a fraction of the same degree of shitty options that a woman has. So, a little bit more pity, but still, it doesn't go into sympathy. Sorry. I can understand why you'd hold on to that, especially given how hard it is for dudes. But, again, no pity. No sympathy. Pity, which is more of a degrading term. So, um, yeah, um, feel free to dislike the video, I guess. I don't really don't give a shit. Uh, just give me views. And hopefully you don't get abused. 
hopefully if you do run into an abusive relationship you are you have the emotional intelligence to do something about it before it really gets gets bad and if you don't and you make excuses for it you try to like siphon sympathy from people then it's like go fuck yourself <laughs> learn some accountability and don't just hold yourself accountable but hold other people accountable don't use your emotions solely to judge people be better than that humans are more than capable of doing these things we just choose not to because of our dumbass emotions so try to keep those contained be accountable have a good rest of your day don't get abused